Good morning. Good afternoon. What time is it? 2 p.m. 2 p.m. We've got our oversized load. It's only 10 feet wide and just the front trailer. Back trailer is undersized. Not even uh, close to max weight, so it should be a nice load. We're going to hammer down, get up and over Paulson here, just in Castlegar at uh, Big not big. Bill Bill's heavy duty. Can I say? Those clouds look pretty cool in that shot. In your camera there. Oh, okay. What are you looking at? Like, that actually looks pretty cool. Let's see if we can do a U-turn here. Think we can? the RV doing? I don't think they know. Like he's going to back up? Yeah, I think so too. Do we do a U-turn? I was going to go through the yard, but maybe we can just do it here. Oh yeah, it looks like down there is a big turnaround space. Oh yeah, we can do this. We passed halfway. Don't worry, it's just the oversize. Try to hit the truck. There we go! Easy! What are you do with your hands? Are you are you driving? I feel like I'm riding a horse. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes she moves her hands as if she's driving. But I would make a move here. I would change something. I'd be braking already. I, I usually try not to, but yeah, I'm guilty of that. Definitely guilty. Or if I don't think you're on the road enough, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm run off the road. I'm like, well, I'm a wide load. I'm allowed to run off the road. I'm not usually that talkative with my hands, but I am when you're driving, apparently. There you go. My guess is pretty cool. I do some wee crazy stuff, like some absolutely crazy stuff, and she doesn't even flinch with our own personal vehicle. For the record, our own personal vehicle. Do some crazy stuff. No flinching at all. Um, when she's kind of taking a nap or just kind of relaxing and not zone, kind of zoned out and all of a sudden catches me doing something going, why is he on the shoulder here? When there were, I had a reason to be on the shoulder, she all, all of a sudden makes some hand motions, but rarely, pretty rarely. I think that is from a lot of trust. I learn to trust you as a driver that Having you... Having said that, you know what, if I just take a random person off the street to be my passenger, I think on some of those mountain passes, they would want to get out of the truck because of how quick we go around those corners and how out of control it feels in a big rig. Yeah. And this, this truck's got four, eight airbags in the back. So there's a big difference between if the drives are on four airbags or eight airbags. If, if the truck is on eight airbags, it feels like it's going to roll over all the time. If it's on four airbags, it's a lot more solid. There's no roll to the truck. They 
basically four airbags. It's basically one end of the uh, axle pivot point is solidly attached to the frame with a joint that just pivots up and down. And the airbag is on the other end of that pivot. So it's so on a, on a four bag, the axle is solidly attached to the frame. On an eight airbag, the axles are just floating there. They're, they're stoppers to keep it from falling straight out, but <laughs> and the airbags keep it from smashing against the frame. But they're just loose floating there. They're, like they're stoppers that keep it within a uh, range. But it does give you the feeling of you're going to roll over on every single corner if you're not used to it. <laughs> I remember the first corner I took with this truck compared to the truck going from four airbags to eight airbags. The first corner is like, oh boy, hold on, hold on, we're going to roll over. I thought I took the corner at the right speed and it's like, oh, it's the airbags. So you kind of get used to that. So if you're not used to feeling like you're going to roll over around corners, it could really throw you for a loop riding in a truck like this. If you want to have a lot of fun, just has to go bobtailing. No, oh, bobtailing sucks. That's not fun. Well, that's why I just mean sarcastic. There's, there's nothing fun there. Sarcasm? Nothing fun there at all. It's actually very... I hate bobtailing. Yeah, it's not enjoyable. <laughs> You want to feel like you broke your back. Go Bob Daly. <laughs> we just did that. We had to drop our trailers because the insurance from Sutco was ending. Now we are on track line insurance. For the trailers. For the trailers. Your truck's already done. Truck, yeah, the truck was done before it started. It trailer is finally now insured by trap line, so I don't think there's anything else we have to do now other than regular maintenance. So basically we stopped to get flags and stuff for oversized load. And get the insurance into place to put those on. Dave. Yeah, we were supposed to do that, yeah. Just text them, uh, do they want the tarps on, do they want the tarps off before I show up on location? That, that's all you need to ask them for right now. Do they want the tarps off before I show up on location? There's a very valid thing to ask when you're going to like narrow city streets in Vancouver where taking tarps off is not fun. <laughs> and that was out helping you tarp your load. Yeah. Jess is actually doing a pretty good job at pulling on those bungees. She needs to get a little more muscle for taking license plates off. I Those bolts were seized solid. So do I really need I, to? I was under the trailer and she was outside of the trailer. We broke almost every bolt off instead of actually unscrewing them for the license plates. I think I did pretty darn good. You know, that's not usually how you find your license plates. You know. No, that's usually how we find our license plate. Uh, not sure. I was hoping to call with the ETA and can find out. Uh, say, at this point, 10, 10 a.m. is the ETA. 10 a.m.? Yeah. Okay. After the pass, what be it for a message? Whew. Okay. 
he found it funny when I called him back. He was expecting it to be you. I was like, oh wait, it's the other person. <laughs> like, yeah, there's two of us. I have a lot of fun joking around with him. I think it lets him just... It's a little stress relief having a surprise, right? Yeah. So I'm like a little, oh, they wasn't expecting that. It's not, it's not a negative surprise, right? No, it was a joke. It was, it was a funny... No, but a positive surprise yeah. helps him relieve some stress when he's got way yeah. too much going on. And like, I've talked to him enough this week that he knows I'm with you already, so it's not really a surprise surprise. Unless you just ditched me in Vancouver yesterday or something, you know? Yep. One of these days. Now you want to ditch me? Yeah. I was doing well, so good you know what? today, man. As long as you keep filling out the paperwork like you did tomorrow, today morning, I'll ditch you somewhere. And then I made up with it with you know, there's a place in the tarp. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that made up for it. She messed up my paperwork so badly. I don't even know what's up and down anymore. Two separate orders and the two separate orders were all mixed up on the paperwork. I'm like, okay. I know why, but I don't want to go into that. <laughs> okay. Stop talking about you messing up. No. I'll admit I messed up and then I fixed <coughs> it. And then Excuse me. after fixing it, I, I still try to butter you up and get brownie points. Well, I could use some brownies. It doesn't matter what I put in this truck on Sunday or Monday when we leave. It's gone by Sunday or Monday. No, we still have a little bit of chips left. And lots of cookies still left. Uh, I'll admit, I have been hiding something from you. What? What? <laughs> what? We still have chocolate. I don't know, I saw there was still chocolate in the fridge. Oh, I thought you thought we were all done. No, no, there, there's still one chocolate left in there. No, we have more. Okay, there's, oh, there's Kit Kat at the bottom? Yeah. I think I saw those, yeah. See, I've been hiding them. Plus, in the door, there's another bar, too. I know. I did put things below your eye level, and you never find them. Until you do, and then I'm in trouble. <laughs> Yesterday a car followed me to the brake check, so I just parked next to the other truck that was doing a brake check, so we were too wide. And that way the car just goes, oh, what the heck, this guy is just completely stopping over here. This isn't the lane of travel? No, it's a brake check. I don't understand why cars think pulling into the brake check is a smart thing to do. <laughs> it's like it doesn't look like another lane. When the lane split, there's no broken line. It's just the open line. It's like here's an open lane split. There's signs that say passing lane all over the place. Pay attention. And then, when you get to a brake check, it's, it's a broken line that we're allowed to cross that the solid white line. You pull into the pullout, you pull over, get out and take to do your brake check. And then all of a sudden there comes a car full speed by you, right beside you while you're trying to do a brake check. I'm like, what are you doing in here at full speed? Eventually a truck's going to get hit or a driver's going to get hit, get injured or killed because some car wasn't paying attention and thought they could brake check as a lane. If it's like a 
Flatlander that does it? I'm like, yep, they just don't know better, right? But if it's a local, it's like, come on, you've driven on these highways how often? You should know what a brake check is. It's very well signed. It's a brake check is not the place for an RV to spend the night. You don't want to. All you're going to have all night long is truck after truck after truck coming and making all this noise. You don't want to sleep in a brake check. So if you're in an RV and you see a nice big pullout, but the signage says brake check, it might be nice and quiet right now, but it's going to not be that way overnight. You're not going to sleep well. You do not want to sleep in a brake check. Brake checks are for trucks. Pull in, make all sorts of noise with our brakes while we're stopping and pumping our brakes. And then we go hammer all the tires, thump, 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 thump. Banging around on our load to make sure our load is secure. If you're sleeping in the brake check, be ready to be woken up over and over and over. And most brake checks are so small that if you have four trucks show up, the brake check's full. So if an RV is sleeping in there, guess what? We have to now stop on the road on a busy highway.
11 degrees Celsius, quite nice. Didn't need a jacket to tarp. As far as tarping, the, the, where my hand struggles the most is the two smallest fingers. The pinky and the... What's the finger next to the pinky? The ring finger. Is that the ring? The ring finger, right? Yeah. Those two fingers hurt when pulling on a bungee. So, I'm struggling with that part, but uh, that wasn't too bad. It just helped a lot, so that was helpful. <laughs> I tarped two trailers while the guy in front of us couldn't get one trailer tarped. So the guy in front of us loaded, pulled out of the way. We took at least half an hour, maybe longer, probably more like 45 minutes to get loaded, strapped down, and we could go show up at the tarping station. So he had 45 minutes of tarping before I got there. And we got these two trailers tarped before he was done tarping. We left. He was still tar finishing tarping. He was so slow at strapping down the load, too. <laughs> I went and helped him strap down his load. One of those, um, well, just kept hearing me yell, incompetent driver. Could have been just a rookie and new driver, too, but I kept yelling, incompetent. Ow, son of a. Mm, yep, that's bruised. I just put my arm on the steering wheel right on my bruise. Somewhere I bruised myself yesterday. Sausage and Ritz crackers, a little bit of cheese, no wine.
came past us here. Wait for a bit, but what was it? A week or 
ago where snow was hitting the passes, froze up in the middle of the creative path and not connector. Yeah, I think that was a week ago. I think these lines into the ditches were probably for that. Passes 
best. Lots of wildlife. Car burned down over there. Seven degrees Celsius, a little cooler up here. I think you saw a moose up here once. And then we saw that black wolf dog thing once. Yeah, yeah. But you really don't see much else. Chain up lights are off. Woo. We still have to worry about chaining up. Next winter we're gonna have to chain up a lot. Good. <laughs> it's a little bumpy. learning how to drive this automatic or not necessarily it wasn't this one it was the uh, international automatic same type of automatic though well, they're all eat, eaten transmissions and uh, Cummins engines so same same setup as far as the drive train most of the embarrassing spin out I've ever done is coming up Made it all this way with a super B without spinning up. Like I said, I was still learning how to drive the automatic, and 
The automatic decided to have a heart attack and didn't know what gear to go in. I made a shift while climbing this hill over here. Uh, not at the bottom of the hill. other truckers are watching me and it's not even the steepest section you start actually leveling out before that so right here I spun out a car and a brake check see the heck is a car doing a brake check it's a fairly big big brake check so it should be okay but please stay out of brake checks but yeah I spun out right over there everybody watching me I didn't realize how to drive an automatic, how not to make an automatic panic on ice. That takes some, some practice. Practice or experience? Yeah, both. What goes the same thing? That's what I'm questioning. Practice. Practice makes experience. Word. It means the same thing. Lose your thought for the day. It's an unnecessary thought of the day. Here's the summit. That's how close I was to the summit. Bolton Summit. Uh, 1535 meters. 1,500. I liked my thought of the day. Are you offended that I thought your thought of the day was unnecessary? Yeah. That's pretty... I'll, I'll be offended with you. That's very unnecessary for you to tell me that. Oh, oh, am I getting a welcome to the ah, U.S.? Ah, shoot, yeah, me. <laughs> I'm probably getting a welcome <laughs> to the U.S. <laughs> I got one yesterday. Hopefully I don't get a charge. I haven't yet. But we get them every time we go over here. Bobby says, welcome to the U.S. Oh, one of them is actually a text from Jeff. See? They probably use the U.S. cell phone then. Yeah. Dang it. If I have a charge. Just charge Jeff. <laughs> so upset. <laughs> Just charge Jeff for it. I'll have a U.S. text message charge, right? It's like five bucks or something. I don't remember. We have to make sure the easy room is on, and then it's not as expensive. And we have to turn that uh, call spam thing back yes. on. Yes, yes. I'll have to remember to try to do that. up on the brake check we'll call it a day there at least we recorded something a little bit differently today than we have for the last three weeks but don't worry tomorrow isn't be the normal well the fact that he just got me a permit for a month makes me worry that I'm not going anywhere long distance for a month oh, I never got to talk about how awesome this building is that we're going to yeah, it's a pretty cool building where they're building with this freight. So think about like a honeycomb design on the outside of the building where it's literally the building structural system. Why don't you take a screenshot of it? Yeah, I'm trying to remember that when we have self-service. We'll throw it in over here. It would actually be the tallest mass timber building in North America when it's done. Nice. It's not super tall, but... It's in stories, so... 
for mass that timber. Love cat stories. Yeah, but for mass timber to do that on the outside and have it be the structural integrity of this building is pretty cool. Yeah, the structural integrity of the building is on the outside. Well, the inside is just going to be open and spacious because all the structural stuff will be yeah. outside. Well, you have some support beams, of course, but uh, it's, it's pretty cool. All right, for now, we are out of here. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Thank you for uh, slowly paying off these cameras. Really, really, really appreciate it. For now, we are out of here. I just said that. I just said it a second time. You guys absolutely rock. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.